Last time on Pokemon Emerald Kaizo Nuzlocke, Theon spends a stupid amount of time grinding up his team to take on Watson. After losing two beloved members, No Yu and Yeet, Theon sought revenge and with Island and Hulk, together they teamed up and defeated Watson. Afterwards, Theon headed to Mount Chimney to get to Falbar Town, but Team Magma's everywhere. Will he prevail? Stick around and find out for the next episode of Emerald Kaizo Nuzlocke. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Emerald Kaizo Nuzlocke. This is part 4 of the series, and last time I kind of made an oopsie. In the last episode, I said shiny Pokemon have immunity. Now, this is technically what this rule means, because instead of releasing our Pokemon, we are boxing them. And that's what this rule mainly means, but looking at the further rules that Bulbapedia has, it is a lot of easy baby stuff. It turns out on Bulbapedia, there are literally hundreds of optional rules, and this shiny clause that I accidentally found was from these optional rules, and I decided not to use that, because... I, I understand, it's not fair. Alright guys, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into episode 4. I know this game was going to get a lot harder, a lot faster, so we put Bali and XD into the daycare center, so when we grind, they also level up. I make my way through Jagged Pass without running into an encounter, and I'm glad I didn't because I completely forgot, and I ran into a Smeargle who was spamming Aerial Blast, and we also got burned, so we were not doing much damage with Island, and at this point, I was kinda stuck. We end up having to sacrifice Womanky to get a safe switch in on the Smeargle. This thing was just absolutely going off, doing a ton of damage with Aeroblast. Can we get some Fs in chat for Womanky? That was unexpected, but at least it was an island. We then hunt for our encounter in the Jagged Pass. Now, the encounter in this place is absolutely awful, and that's why we didn't run into one earlier, but our encounter is Vulpix at level 27. Definitely not bad at all. I end up capturing it and naming it Ray, because, like, the sun's rays? I, I thought it was funny. Hey, guys, come on, give me credit. Now, unfortunately, up ahead, there are a lot of forced double battles, but we do have the level advantage, like always, because we end up grinding our butts off every single chance we get. Also, using Rock Slide on both Pokemon definitely helped us out a lot because the opposing Pokemon almost always ended up flinching. I genuinely thought this old lady was going to challenge us to a battle due to how crazy this game is, but luckily she still heals us like always. On Route 113, we run into our encounter Shroomish. Now, Shroomish isn't bad at all, especially once it evolves, so this is probably going to be useful later on. I end up naming it Devon because it reminds me of the Devon Corporation worker back in Rustboro Forest. We also end up losing Rar RHM Rock Smash user due to Tropius using Giga Drain and just caught us in a really awkward situation. This really did panic me because I thought Tropius was going to kill everybody because I really didn't have an answer to it, but somehow Island survives a four times super effective Giga Drain and we retaliate with Ice Punch taking it out. Island is by far one of our strongest Pokemon, but this four times grass weakness is going to be the death of us. I really don't want to mess with Red at this point because we don't have Earthquake on Swamper yet and I know that move is definitely going to help, so we come back later. It's taking a very long time, but we end up grinding in this grass on Route 113 and we run into a Parasect who ends up putting Island to sleep and hitting us with Giga Drain. I was like, oh, no big deal. He's just going to use Giga Drain once again. So we switch into Sid as we get Spored. And this thing, of course, has Exazor and takes us out. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that happened. We need some more Fs in chat, please. Three minutes into the video and we already have a three deaths. Hello, Rock Smash user. It takes a stupid amount of time once again, but eventually we run into a Parasect and take it out with Ice Punch, getting to level 52, learning Earthquake. Of course, I end up replacing Mudshot with Earthquake because Earthquake is just the better form of Mudshot. Shot. Once I have Earthquake, I'm confident we could take on Red. I knew Earthquake was an extremely strong move, but I wasn't sure if it was strong enough to take out Venusaur. First out is Pikachu, and we take it out with one super effective Earthquake, as next up is Venusaur. Luckily, Venusaur was able to get taken out with one Earthquake, and that was the only threat I was worried about. Next out is Espeon, who goes down to one Earthquake as well. Next out is Snorlax, and once again, I wasn't sure if I was able to one-shot him, but luckily, Island is strong enough and ends up taking him out. Next, Red sends out his Blast, who is at level 32, who goes down to one Earthquake as well. Last out was Charizard, and we can't hit it with Earthquake, whatever do we- oh yeah, we have Rock Slide. It did take a little bit of grinding, but just like that, we defeat Red. Know your place, trash. And this shop in Fall Arbor Town actually has Evolution Stones, which is very nice, and we also buy a couple Lemonades, because Lemonade is best drink. There are some patches of grass in Fall Arbor Town, and I did not know this until I ran into it, but this is a Steel-type encounter. As you can see, this encounter right in this grass is literally the worst thing in the entire game. It takes forever, but eventually we do run into an Aeron. That's not bad at all. This thing's already level 34, and it's not really that far 
away from evolving into an aggron. That's definitely going to be helpful if we could actually get it there. This thing did not want to be captured at all. It hit Island and Hulk really hard, almost taking out Hulk, but eventually we end up catching it with a great ball. I was going to name Aeron Ace, but Ace is kind of a guy's name, so we end up naming it Asu. I then get a Fire Evolution Stone and give it the Ray so she turns yellow. On Route 114, we run into a Pikachu, which is going to be our encounter for this route. I capture it and then name it Bolt, because Zoom Zoom. Many, many, many trainers later, we eventually make it into Meteor Falls. And to my surprise, it is the same cutscene as always. That means next we head up the Mount Chimney. Oh yeah, our encounter for Meteor Falls is a Clefairy, we end up capturing it relatively easy. I end up naming Clefairy Wish, because Wish Protect Toxic. I defeat the Team Magma Grunts here, but I'm not stupid. I know that the admin and Maxi himself has an insane team, so we have to grind up. I then get Bolly out of the Daycare Center at level 46, and at level 47, Bolly learns a Blizzard, an extremely strong Ice-type move that we could definitely use. I end up replacing Water Pulse, because Water Pulse is just a bad bubble beam. Bolly then evolves into the Tanky Wall Rain, which is definitely going to be useful. Looking at the Team Magma Admin's team, it has a ton of hidden powers, and it's not even telling me what type it is, and it's also an extremely strong team. Oh, fantastic. Maxi has a level 38 Registeel with no moveset. Okay. I definitely have to grind some more. After using the daycare and grinding up itself for a little bit in our Sproul Tunnel, Asu gets to level 42, where she evolves into Aggron. Aggron's definitely going to be good for this run. Too bad it doesn't learn Earthquake through level up. The way I gained XP instead of grinding with a Sweet Scent user, I just ended up getting on a bike going up and down the Jagged Path with a couple Pokemon in the Pokemon daycare. Even though the encounter rate in here is low, we still run into a Pokemon every now and then, and we use Bali to take them out, getting even more XP. It takes over a day of grinding, but eventually abusing the daycare, using speed up, getting on my bicycle, spending way too much time, this is our team. I put Swampert out in front because it's definitely our strongest Pokemon. Swampert is at level 56, which is a good improvement. We have Bolt, which isn't really going to be used. Hulk at level 53, Bali at level 50, Ray at level 50, and Asu at level 47. Well guys, this is where I cross my fingers. Here we go. Team Magma Admin Tabitha leads off with a level 37 Dotrio. Now we do have Ice Punch, so I'm not really worried about it, but Dotrio ends up hitting us with a critical double edge, doing a ton of damage, crippling my entire plan. We have to be careful here. We only have 87 HP left against a really strong team. Arcanine comes out next, but we take it out with one super effective Earthquake. Next, that was Weezing at level 37, and I was pretty confident we could take this out with one Muddy Water, but I was wrong as we get hit with a super effective Hidden Power. It almost scares me into switching out, but I have to stay in, and I go for Rock Slide because it has 100% accuracy, unlike Muddy Water. Next up is a level 37 Flygon, who is four times a week to Blizzard, so I know if we connect with the Blizzard, it's going to do a lot of damage. Bali ends up getting smacked around by Flygon here, but luckily we end up hitting it, taking it out one hit. Once Flygon is taken out, next up is Manetric. Manetric is level 37, who has a pretty good moveset, but we just switch into Hulk because I know a couple of Thrashes should be able to take it out. This time, I was right. Thrash does just over half HP as we get hit with a Thunderbolt, one more is enough to take it out. Last out is a Aggron at level 38. Now, this is kind of scary because I get confused here, but I know a Brick Break will take it out, but unfortunately, we get hit with a Flash Cannon and we also hit ourselves in confusion. I think Asu is better than him because we are 9 levels higher, so I switch into Asu, but he has Earthquake unlike us, bringing us down to only 3 HP. It was also a critical hit, which is crazy. I know if Aggron goes for another Earthquake, we're definitely going to get taken out, so we switch into Bolt for the Sacrifice, but he ends up going for Flash Cannon instead as he ate his own Ordenberry as a last goodbye. We've lost so many members this episode, but since we now have a free switch in, we go into Island who obviously outspeeds Aggron, and we take it out with one super effective Earthquake. That was rough. I did not like that at all. I have no idea how we're going to take out Maxi. For the first time in literally forever for this battle, I literally got out a pen and paper and planned out how this was going to go. Maxi leads off with a level 38 Reggie Steel who has a Lumberry and an unknown moveset, but we're able to take it out with one super effective Earthquake. Next out is a level 39 Houndoom who has Hidden Power, and I'm not taking any chances, so I'm switching out and I'm going into Hulk. Houndoom's moveset is kind of mysterious as we don't know what Hidden Power it is, and we also have a missing move, but we're able to take it out with one Brick Break. Next out was Claydol at level 39 with a Lumberry, Explosion, Earthquake, Psychic, and Signal Beam. Instead of going for Muddy Water, we go for Ice Punch for some reason. I really don't have a good excuse for that. We take a Critical Psychic, but one more Ice Punch is enough to take it out. Next out is Crobat at level 39 who has Poison Fang, Air Slash, Giga Drain, and Heat Wave, and those moves don't really do that much to Aggron, so we switch out and use Rock Slide. Rock Slide is so close to being able to take out Crobat with one, but one more is enough to take it out. Next out is Dusclops at level 38, and we do not have a direct answer for him, so we go ahead and switch into Ray. I do have Bite on Ray, and this game Bite is a special move, so we go ahead and use that as it does a good amount of damage as we get hit with a Seismic Toss, doing just a little bit as our second Bite flinches, and we take it out with one more Bite. Last but not least, Alakazam is out at level 38 with a Lumberry, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, and Psychic, and none of those moves could really touch Island, so we use one Earthquake, and we take it out, defeating Maxi.
see. I grinded up so much for these two battles, and it was definitely worth it as we only lost one team member and he wasn't even one of the main ones. He definitely will be missed, but at least it was an island. With Maxi out of the way, we take the meteorite, and next up is Flannery. Now, are we ready for Flannery? I have no idea. On Mount Chimney, we run into our encounter, and we catch him on cargo, and we name it Schloop because I have... I have no idea why, I just did. It turns out in Flannery's gym, it's actually always sunny, which is not going to be good for Island. It takes a while, but eventually I do find my way through this maze and give our Pokemon some berries to help us with this battle. Flannery leads off with a level 41 Ninetales who has a Lumberry, Hidden Power, Electric, Overheat, Solar Beam, and Hypnosis. I lead off with Ray as I know my Ninetales is stronger. I go for Confused Ray, but Ninetales has a Lumberry and instantly heals itself as it tries to hit us with Will-O-Wisp as we land the second Confused Ray. I then go for Flamethrower, doing a crap ton of damage damage since the sun is up, and then Ninetales hit itself in confusion, and we finish it off with one more flamethrower. I needed to switch into somebody who had rock slide, so it's four times super effective, and I went for island, and I, I have no idea why. Now, I really wasn't thinking here, Charizard does have solar beam, but for some reason I didn't see it on the move list, but it doesn't matter, as he only uses heat wave as we're able to take it out. Next out is Blaziken at level 42, who has a lumberry, blaze kick, sky uppercut, thunder punch, and solar beam. I use confused ray once again, but Blaziken heals itself with the lumberry as we go for confused ray one more time, and it hits itself in confusion. We already got hit once with Sky Uppercut as we land a flamethrower doing a lot of damage as we take another Sky Uppercut. Luckily we were faster and we were able to take out Blaziken with one more flamethrower. Next out is Typhlosion at level 42 who has a Lumberry, Solar Beam, Heat Wave, Earthquake, and Wild Charge. I go for Rock Slide here almost taking out Typhlosion in one hit and not getting a crit unfortunately as we get hit with a critical Solar Beam as one more Rock Slide is enough to take it out. Flannery then sends out a Arcanine at level 41 with Leftovers, Wild Charge, Heat Wave, Solar Beam, and Extreme Speed. I really don't have anything for Arcanine, so we switch into Asu. Because Arcanine has Intimidate, our attack gets lowered by one stage as we go for Rock Slide, and Arcanine outspeeds us going for a Solar Beam. Arcanine then goes for Heat Wave instead of Solar Beam and takes out Asu. Oh my gosh. With a heavy heart, I send out Hulk to finish the job. I go for Rock Slide once again, taking out Arcanine. Last out is Cast Form at level 42, and we really do not have an answer for this guy. Island is almost at full HP, so I'm just hoping that he could live a Solar Beam. One Earthquake is enough to take Cast Form out, but unfortunately he does end up going for Solar Beam, leaving us with only 3 HP as we retaliate with Earthquake, taking it out. That was way too close. We almost lost our MVP. Unfortunately, we did lose Asu. Now, I spent a lot of time grinding up Asu, so it's unfortunate to see her go so soon. But with that, we collect the 4th Gym Badge from Flannery. Luck wasn't even on our side for this battle, but we still end up pulling through. As we go put Asu in the PC, we could see all of our fallen friends. I'm gonna let Asu keep the Ordinary I gave it for this battle. It's the least I could do. These are all the Pokemon who have made Made sacrifices to get us where we are and i do appreciate each and every one of them i hope you guys enjoyed this episode like always and if you want to see more make sure to hit that like button below also let me know down in the comments below who is your favorite team member and have they died yet let me know thanks for watching like always guys and i will see you in the next one